Welcome back, gang. I'm Zell, and if you watched that top five video I just did on the EDC knives under 40 bucks, at the end of that video, we talked a little bit about maintaining the 8CR13 MOV, OS 8, and even your higher end steels. And the big thing you need there was a strop. So I got to thinking about that, and I got to looking around the house, and I found some stuff. You know, you know, I have some of these Aussie strops, and I can kind of recommend them, kind of not. Uh, they're a little thin if you're going to set them on the desk to strop with, or whatever surface you're working on. But very good strops, and they come with compounds, so it's kind of a package deal. You're good to go. But I realize not all of us have 30 bucks to spend, or not all of us want to let go of 30 bucks for a piece of leather and wood. So what can we do? Well, I found an old belt that I cut up, and just to try, I made a strop out of it. Very simple, 2x4, and some Gorilla Glue to hold the belt down. And whenever you use that Gorilla Glue, be sure you I put another 2 before on top of this. And put about 35 pounds of weight to hold that uh, belt down on there and put that all together and stropped up this Delica. I don't know if you can see that but I pretty much got a mirror edge out of it and so I was looking around a little more thinking how can we make some strops cheap I mentioned leather scraps in that video. So I was looking around and I found this piece of leather. It's not really supposed to be a scrap. It was a piece of vegetable tanned leather I had picked up to make a holster for a gun that uh, my wife confiscated and lets me fondle occasionally. So I didn't make a holster for myself. But I did use this piece of leather here on the desk surface to strop with, I thought, well, why not make an actual strop out of this? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take some pieces of wood and we're going to take some paint stirs of all things. This hunk of belt, this hunk of scrap leather, and we're going to build some strops. So come on in here and let's get a look on how to do that. So, you want to make a strop block but you don't have a lot of money to spend. First thing I did to accomplish this, went to Lowe's. Got a three quarter by two and a half, three quarter high by two and a half wide, by two foot long originally piece of oak. Now I have the equipment to cut this down to cut it in half basically to about a 12 inch piece of oak. If you don't have the equipment, that's where Lowe's comes in, or Home Depot, or many of your other home improvement stores. Menards probably does this. Anyhow, if you buy the piece of wood from them, they have a saw in there, and they should cut it in half for you. I know that our local Lowe's and Home Depot both will do that. If they won't do it, it doesn't take a fancy saw. You know, I used a miter saw, but you could get away with a jigsaw or a handsaw, hacksaw, I mean, just about anything. And if you get it in pine, it'll be really easy to cut. I got oak here. That would have been a little tougher to cut with a uh, hacksaw or something. But anyhow, if you get it from one of the home improvement stores, they ought to be able to cut it in half for you. And what we have here is a piece of vegetable tanned leather that was for another project and I ended up going in a different direction with it so we're going to use this in fact you can see I've already used it some as a strop but we're going to use this as our stropping material so first thing I'm going to do is lay it up here and get the get this edge lined up with the edge of the leather and then, Rob, I'm going to use a very sharp, full flat ground VG10 Delica 
to cut this leather. There we go. And for this strop, I'm going to put finish side up. So, I have Gorilla Glue, a white Gorilla Glue pen. Now, I haven't used the white Gorilla Glue yet, so I guess we're going to find out how it works. But I read the instructions. Yes, I really read the instructions. And they are just pretty much the same as regular Gorilla Glue. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we get our corners and edges. Just dot that stuff along. And guys, you don't have to use Gorilla Glue. That just happened to be what I wanted to use because it's a good all-purpose glue that seems to work well just about anywhere and with just about any type of material. You know, if you wanted to use contact cement, which is probably what you should use, or, you know, whatever, just whatever you've got around little stick that's not going to soak into the leather. It needs to be something semi-thick and kind of sticky because you do not want to use some thin glue that's going to soak into your leather and mess up the stropping surface. But the basis for this and the reason that we're doing this is To make a strop, I mean, I know you can get them online for 20 bucks, sometimes a little cheaper. You know, I've got those Aussie strops. I gave about 30 for those. They did come with some um, compound, but it's not necessary. This is building your own strop. This piece of leather, I got at the local leather shop. Now, the piece I got was not a scrap. It was a specifically cut and measured for thickness piece for a gun holster that I ended up going another way with. And there we go. Flip it back around. Smooth it out. Now what I'm going to do is since I have the other half of this board and Gorilla Glue tells you to put pressure on it I'm going to take this off camera. I'm going to set about probably about a 20 pound weight right here and let this set for two hours and we'll come back and look at it. Also in that video I mentioned that we could make a strop out of a belt. A used belt. And I have done that. And some of you may know this emblem. It was an old Levi's brand belt. Genuine leather. And I've got green compound on one side. And I put some of the diamond emulsion on this side just to see if it would work. That little full flat ground Delico we just used a minute ago to cut that leather with. It was stropped right there on that diamond emulsion. And I think the edge came out pretty good. Anyhow, I got to thinking and we're going to do this, I hope... A little bit better. Earlier this afternoon Susie and I stopped by our local Lowe's and our local Walmart and I asked them politely if I could have some paint stir sticks and they said sure and the stir sticks are made out of a similar wood looks kind of like a balsa but I'm not sure. However the ones from Walmart are denser so those are the ones we're going to use thank you Walmart and thank you Lowe's and here's how I'm going to do this so I'm going to take these I'm going to glue them together stack them up and glue them together that way we have 
a little bit of thickness for our strop and I'll take care of that and when it comes time to put the strop material on we'll come back and look at it. All right here we are a couple hours later our strop is glued up. We see we've got some glue we've squeezed out there. We're going to try to trim some of that back with our Delica. And this doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It just depends on how OCB you are. And I'll probably do some more cleaning on that later, but for now, we just want to get the big hunks off there. And you can see we overlapped a little here. I'll clean that up later. And we overlapped some here. But what we got out of this was a nice flat stropping surface. And the way I achieved this was after we put that glue down, I have an identical piece from where I cut that piece of oak in half. I put this on here. And I went over to the weight set and put 35 pounds right across here, which squeezed all that excess glue out and allowed things to adhere rather nicely and gave us a nice flat surface. At this point, this strop is ready to be loaded with either rouge or diamond emulsion or just use the way it is if you don't have access to those things our Walmart paint stirrer. Yeah, we got a lot of crap here we need to clean up, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and then we'll glue, cut our belt and glue it on there. All right, I cleaned up most of that. And what I have here is a section of belt from that one I showed you earlier. It's just a Another section of that same belt and what we're going to run into is these paddles together are a little over an inch wide and the belt's about 1.4 inches wide but what I'm going to do is go ahead and glue that belt down onto the paddle we will cut it for length Score that there to mark our length. There we go. And considering where I have roughed this up with belt loops, I'm going to leave the back side up. The back side on this leather is pretty darn smooth, so I think it'll do just fine. Get our Gorilla Glue out again. And same as last time, just start making little dots of Gorilla Glue everywhere. And lay our stropping material down on there. And now this is going to go back under the weight. I'm going to use that piece of oak that I used uh, before to weigh this down. Whenever I just glued these pieces together I didn't worry about having something on top of it. I just took a 15 pound weight little dumbbell and stuck over it and that gave me enough pressure to squeeze all that glue out. So we're gonna go put this under the weight and we'll be back whenever it's done. Here I've taken some KME Sharpener's 4 Micron Diamond Liquid Emulsion and I put on a lot more than what KME says to do but I just dotted about half of this thing because I really figure that's all I'm going to use with most of the three, three and a half inch knives and now I'm just going to spread it around with my finger
Once I'm done spreading it around, and I did get too much, you could say, but once I'm done spreading it around, I'm just going to kind of let it dry. And once it's dried, we'll run that Delica over it a few times and see how it works out. All right, guys, we're pretty much cured out here. And I'm rather surprised it's come out pretty good. Now, if you look at this side, we've got some extra glue everywhere. And I'm going to clean that up later. For now, it comes out pretty stable. It's not perfectly flat, but uh, I've got a remedy for that. This is just some of that uh, matting like you would put in your kitchen cabinets. Lay it down on there, and all of a sudden we're nice and stable. What we're going to do now is load this strop. I've got some green compound and to load one of these things it's it's not complicated it's not some kind of voodoo or magic or anything I'm just gonna use it like a crayon draw across the leather note right here I've got a bit of a spot in the leather up there. Anyhow, draw across it like a crayon. We got some of that stuff a little bit of pretty much everywhere now. Now this Delica. We use this Delica for a reason. The Apostle P will tell you that the VG10 will roll. Alright, all we've done with this thing today <clears throat> is cut that leather and trim some glue. And that glue is pretty soft, guys. And trim a little bit of that oak and a little bit of this uh, light wood. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So he says this stuff rolls. Let's see if he's right. Um, yeah, I agree with him. That's pretty rough compared to where it started today. I should have showed you guys that too. So now that we've got the strop loaded, and we're just using a belt here guys, nothing fancy. We're gonna run this thing back and forth across it a few times. I need better whenever I get that cut to fit and put it on the back which I will do. I'll cut that to fit the back of this little strop and I'll glue it to the back of the strop. And all I'm doing here guys is using my thumb on this side I'll go, go that way again. Using my thumb over here near the tip of the blade to kind of feel that angle and go across the strop. And then whenever I go here, put these two fingers on it and draw it back. Put those two fingers on it and draw it back. Whenever I get to the tip, lift it up. And you want to lift it up once you get to the tip so that you don't round your tip. And we'll give it just a couple of light ones there. Working with VG10, you want to do really, really light ones. We have another piece of this paper. And it's not perfect, guys, but that was a belt. Yeah, let's see if we can get some light in here on that edge. All right, so that strop cost us about two bucks. Basically, it cost us 
whatever that bottle of glue cost and we didn't use all that much of the glue anyhow i'll get over here trim this thing up or get this one away and we'll trim it up this is the other one we built and we don't need that for this one because while we were away i glued some of that stuff onto the bottom of this one and remember i put that diamond emulsion on there We're going to do the same thing with this bird knife. This is a bird crow, I think. I can't remember whether this one's the raven or the crow. This has got CTS BD1 steel in it. Uh, it's a knife that gives the Tenacious a serious run for its money. It has a couple of problems that we'll talk about whenever I get around to reviewing it. But for the most part... Uh, it's better than the tenacious. Anyhow, that's just a piece of vegetable tanned leather that we're using there. And some 4 micron uh, diamond emulsion. And hang on just a moment. Anyhow, here we go. Got some of that good old phone book paper. Everybody seems to like that stuff. Not a problem with this one. Get the Delica back out here and see what we get. Not a problem. This strop, if you went and got a remnant piece of leather instead of the uh, nice piece that I had bought for the holster, you're probably looking at somewhere five or ten dollars worth of leather three dollars at Lowe's and a bottle of glue and I will suggest that you get some of this shelving material to put on the bottom of them it'll keep them in place when you're using them and here I have some KME sharpeners uh, four micron emulsion and some green rouge and this is just Jewelers Rouge. Green denotes ultra fine, if I remember correctly. And this is what I have been using whenever I do the final strop on my knives. And you've seen some of my edges. They're not as pretty as Rob's, but they're fairly pretty. Anyhow, guys, we're going to back on out of here and we'll talk about this a little bit. Strops are not a big deal. Easy to make, cheap to buy and make a huge difference in maintaining your blades. All right, guys, we built some strops, and I am super surprised at this one. This was a thought that came to me in the middle of the day while my wife and I were out running around taking care of some other stuff. And I thought, you know, those paint stirrers, they're free. I bet we can make a strop, strop out of those with a belt. And then I got my hands on them, and they were pretty thin and kind of flimsy. But after gluing three of them together, we've got a pretty decent strop. I mean, is this something I want to put a $400 knife down? Well, probably not. But that's not why we're making these things. We're making these things because we need something to keep an 8CR13 a VG-10 or, you know, a 154CM, a 420HC blades. Something we need to keep those things sharp and do it on the cheap. And, guys, it don't get any cheaper than this. The only place that I spent any money today whatsoever on this was the glue and this little remnant piece of uh, that cabinet liner material and I'm just gonna say that was free because we purchased that to put in the back of my wife's little SUV so that uh, stuff wouldn't slide around back there and I just stole a little bit of extra now this one wasn't near as surprising I knew we were gonna gonna come up with something good and we did you know this 
vegetable tanned cowhide. You can pick this stuff up at any leather store for a reasonable cost. And it doesn't have to be a nice piece that was perfectly even the same weight all the way through and perfectly tanned and colored and all that. It doesn't have to be that. Uh, like I said earlier, this is just this way because I bought it to make a gun holster with and then uh, that gun, my wife confiscated it. I get to see it on occasion, but it's hers now. And that's okay. I got a new one. So we've got a few dollars in this, probably five or ten bucks. And five or ten bucks in the remnant uh, bin at the leather shop may buy you a lot of leather. Kind of depends on where you're shopping, what the prices are around you. About $3 in this piece of oak. And like I said, if you go to your uh, home improvement stores, they'll probably cut it in half for you. So if you don't have a saw, you're good to go. And I put some of that cabinet material on the back of this one as well. Simply because whenever you lay these things down with that cabinet material, your strop doesn't move. It's right where it's going to be. And of course the two dollars worth of glue or that whole tube cost me two dollars and some change so really we're at less than fifteen bucks for this one too and this drop you bet I'd put a Sabenz on this one an XM18 Hinderer Strider any of them you know so Strops are not that big a deal. You can buy them pre-made, sure. We have the Aussie strop over here. We talked about it. It's a very good strop. But is it any better than this? No, it's not. And a lot more expensive for what you end up with. Is it better than this one? Well, yeah, probably. But remember, we're doing this to take care of those inexpensive blades. And this is going to take care of them well. Put some of that green compound on there or if you can get some of the i believe the next step in uh or step back little rubber stuff is gray don't quote me on that one look it up and make sure but for some of those blades if they're everyday working blades i might even put a little rubber compound on it just so it'll cut a little quicker and you can get back get your edge back it may not come out all shiny like this delica edge but we're talking about using it not making it look pretty Anyhow, guys, I hope you found this useful, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I haven't mentioned it before, but I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those places under Zelric42, Z-E-L-R-I-C-K-42. It's in the description. And the 42 is not a reference to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I was in the U.S. Navy, and 42 is the first part of, well, I'll let you guys try to figure it out. Anyhow, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time.